This is Keys to the Shop, episode 111. Today we're talking about self-care 101. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Keys to the Shop, a show where we give you insights, inspiration, and the tools you need to grow as a coffee service professional. My name is Chris DeFirio. I'm your host for the show, and uh, I'm really excited to talk about something so critical to your success and health. Uh, we're talking about self-care, and um, you know, obviously in the hospitality industry, we are you know, facing outward toward the customer and the shop and uh, you know, all this, the duties that we have, and oftentimes we forget to take care of ourselves. So truly a critical topic. I'm thankful to be able to explore this with you because I know how much it's going to help you. Uh, you know, I'm also thankful for our sponsors here at Keys to the Shop. Uh, and one of those sponsors is Prima Coffee. Now, uh, Prima Coffee is a specialty coffee equipment supplier based out of Louisville, Kentucky. And from the beginning of their business, they've set out to make the best coffee brewing equipment available to the general public and professionals alike. Um, Their focus in this is to curate the best equipment for every need that their customers might have, from grinders to espresso machines, under-counter refrigeration. Whether it's home or commercial, they've got you covered. If you've got a shop that you need to outfit with equipment, uh, these are the people to talk to for sure. They put a big emphasis on having the expertise to help their customers get the right gear to fit every situation. I uh, definitely recommend going to prima-coffee.com. That's prima-coffee.com. Reach out to them through email or phone. Let them know Keys to the Shop sent you. See how they can get the right gear for you in your situation. No matter what it is, they can help you. And my thanks to Prima for their support of Keys to the Shop. Now, another sponsor I want to thank of uh, Keys to the Shop is Pacific Foods. They're the folks behind the Pacific Barista Series line of non-dairy performance beverages. And those are designed specifically for professional baristas and the standards for excellence that they demand. Whether that's almond, soy, coconut, rice, or oat milk, its ability to take the heat from steaming produce an unmatched silky texture, and keep the flavor balance focused on coffee makes it a perfect choice for your cafe's menu. Pacific has been a huge supporter of specialty coffee for years and years, and they demonstrate their passion for the community by listening to and serving the needs of real specialty coffee professionals. So go to pacificfoods.com, that's pacificfoods.com, and learn more about how the Barista Series line of non-dairy performance beverages can really help elevate the non-dairy options in your cafe. So my thanks to Pacific for their support of Keys to the Shop. All right, so today I want to talk about self-care with you, and this topic, of course, is one that is sorely needed for many of us who give so much of our time and energy emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, we just give of ourselves to businesses and to our careers and to others. And oftentimes we do this in detriment to our own health. Um, And what we end up doing sometimes is if we are in that position, it's easy to create enmity between yourself and the work. Um, It's easy to become disenfranchised and bittered. Um, the perspective starts to become warped and it's partially due to an unhealthy relationship between yourself and work and service. And, and so what I'm, my, my biggest hope here is that we can institute some of these practices in our daily rituals, in our daily lives, and the regularity of these things, it's critical uh, so that things don't build up ahead of steam and then you know reach critical mass and and just explode. You know we don't want that. And we, I've been there myself uh, a few times, and so I I know what it's like to be at your wits end and have to reevaluate what you do on a daily basis in order to avoid having that happen again. Um, the greatest thing that could happen from this is that you either find a way forward from an incident like that. And if that's you, I'm sorry that you're, you're there. 
uh, or you avoid it altogether by making these a part of the way that you care for yourself when you are uh, caring for others as a profession, which is basically what we do in specialty coffee. And so let's talk about serving ourselves. <laughs> you know, let's talk about the self-service station here a, a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, t- we talk about professional development a lot on the show and any professional wants to pursue becoming better at their job. And one of the reasons why we can reach a point of stagnation in our professional development is because we've come to a place of not really having capacity anymore personally because we've not really gotten perspective. We've not really allowed ourselves to uh, reset our, our um, bodies or our minds and uh, do things that might seem completely unrelated to becoming a better cupper or roaster or barista or manager, better boss, a better owner. Some of the things we're going to talk about uh, might seem like a waste of time to you. And in the midst of it, you know, when I do these things myself, sometimes I think that like, how is this going to relate to me being a better professional? And even asking that question to myself seems silly because it doesn't necessarily have to relate to being a better professional. Maybe it just is there because I want to be a happier person and I want to be a more well-rounded and um, peaceful, restful um, person. And, And the consequence of this is you become a better professional when you have greater capacity, deeper roots, a more sturdy foundation, and and that's what self-care done right can do for you. So let's talk about practicalities. I want to go through a list of things that I feel are uh, really the basics of self-care. So the first thing I want to go over here has to do with your physical body. You know, when we're on the bar, we are in an environment where our bodies are altered in contorted in different ways for hours on end and we feel so spent at the end of the day um, caring for yourself physically is going to be a really critical part of how you not only survive the shift but get the most out of where you're spending a good portion of your life eight hours a day if you're a full-time employee you're going to want to have a good life at work and caring for yourself physically is going to be one of those things that helps you. So let's talk about the physical aspects of self-care. The first thing is getting a good night's sleep, obviously, is going to help you be rested and help your body reset. Uh, if you want to learn more about really uh, interesting sleep science, you know, Sean, Sean Stevenson, he is the host of the Model Health Show, which is a pretty cool podcast devoted to helping people with their um, just holistic health journey. And uh, he has a book called Sleep Smarter, which is fantastic on the subject, really in-depth look at sleep. Um, The next thing is water. You know, obviously water is one of those things that we forget about on shift. Coffee has water in it, but I drink a bunch of coffee and I'm drinking water at the same time, killing two birds with one stone. Uh, Not so. For, you know, for me... Um, drinking a lot of water on shift actually helps my mental clarity. It helps me make better decisions. It makes my face not look so angry. And it does a lot of really great things. And if funny thing is that your body is 70% water. So you really do have to hydrate or die, as we say on the bar at Quills. <laughs> um, and so we definitely try to uh, keep each other accountable for drinking water because we realize how important it is. Another thing is breathing. Breathing is something I remind myself about all the time. If you're in a practice like uh, yoga or meditation, you are kind of a pro at this and you probably do this uh, more than the average person on a regular basis. You don't have to get into yoga or meditation to be able to remind yourself to breathe. Every day is a new opportunity for us to forget the basics about um, caring for ourselves physically breathing and and taking in oxygen to help fuel your brain and your body it gets more shallow on bar it's 
a lot of quick breaths that don't really saturate your lungs and distribute that oxygen where it's needed. Um, your muscles can get really tense and your mind can get slow. And I always, yeah, I don't say always, I really try even before a shift to take 10 really deep breaths. Like I breathe in for uh, seven seconds, I hold it for eight and I let it out for six. Yeah, that's just what I do. You can adjust the seconds, um, and I do that 10 times, and I feel much better about my shift before I go in. And then I remember to breathe deeply every time, uh, you know, the hour passes on the shift, I try to remind myself. And you would be amazed at how much that makes a difference. So getting good sleep, water, getting a lot of uh, hydration, breathing deeply on a regular basis, and then sunlight is another one. I personally feel like if I can be in the sun more, I will be happier. I get more vitamin D. I feel like I'm in, you know, not just under a fluorescent light for eight hours. I just feel more like a human being. Surprise, surprise, because human beings were kind of uh, made in such a way as to receive sunlight as a part of our health. Our skin has photoreceptors on it which means it, it senses light waves and it absorbs that light and utilizes it to help fuel a, a healthy body. And the final thing is physical uh, exertion and uh, physical activity. You don't have to go to the climbing gym. You don't necessarily ha have to be a CrossFit. Um, but, but work is not a substitute for other physical activity that stretches you. Uh, I feel like Whatever is right for you outside of work that pushes you a little bit past your comfort zone on a regular basis is going to help you um, go into work a little bit more prepared to handle the repetitive tasks, um, you know, putting the milk away in the fridge, making the coffee, standing in one place for a long time. These things can be physically taxing. I find that even if you're super busy and you don't have a ton of time, if you just do something that pushes yourself uh, on a regular basis, when you get back to work, you'll feel like you have more stamina. You feel like you can own the day a little bit more. And of course, there's another thing that I hadn't mentioned, um, and that is your nutrition. Um, I say this as an older person, of course. I just turned 40, so maybe I'm just <laughs> turning into an old hobo, you know, I eat, uh, I bring soup to work with me. I bring, try to bring nutritious things to work with me, good fats, good proteins and, you know, phytonutrients and all that stuff because I used to live, literally live on espresso and broken cookies and raspberry oat bars. <laughs> I could do that uh, for a little bit. I could do that when I was like 22 and um, it didn't necessarily contribute long term to my <laughs> success. Um, it's not too early. It's never too early to really consider having something nutritious with you on the shift so that you're not stuck there only looking at the cookie and a cappuccino as your only form of sustenance. Um, it's not that those things are terrible, but there are definitely no substitute for nutrition. So those are six things physically that I think are basics that can really help you no matter where you are. On, if you're working in the office and sales and wholesale trainer, barista, owner, sleep, water, breathing, sunlight, exercise, and nutrition. Make those absolute priorities in your um, daily life. This is something that I've just been learning the hard way for a long time and in no way perfect at it. So uh, you know, let's get good at these things together is what I say. Now let's talk about the next item and that is you need to know your limitations and don't despise them. So what I mean by that is you can only do so much. If you have obligations in school or family outside of work, whatever it happens to be, and you're a full-time barista, um, you might want to scale back. Or you might want particular shifts that are better for you, um, like if it's better for you to work at night or in the morning. You've got to explore what your limitations are so that 
you can kind of communicate those to the manager or to the owner and make sure that you are living your life at work, you're working within your limitations. And we're taught, I think, to look at our limitations as something to be despised. So we want to be machines. We don't want to be um, limited. That's a terrible word. I don't, I want to be unlimited and have energy for days and days. Well, surprise, you know, um, energy, it goes down. (laughs) This is the law of thermodynamics. uh, And this is something you are not exempt from. And I am not exempt from. We have limits and it's not something you should despise. It's something you should honor. Now you, over time, may be in a position where your limits are, uh, you're at a greater capacity and you could handle more. But pushing yourself to try to increase your uh, capacity beyond your limits just because you don't want to have limits leads to burnout. It's an unhealthy way to view it. And I've, I've done it myself where you're working these 70 to 80 hour weeks. If you're in management, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you you just want to show yourself to be uh, a good worker and you want to fall on the sword so many times and um, you, you do it and you know that you're running on fumes, you know your limits. You, I mean, you have to know your limits and scale back. It might be a blow to your ego to do so, but you need to do it so that you don't burn out. So know your limits, don't despise them, work within those things and look at them as evolving over a longer period of time. Don't try to unnaturally stretch yourself just in a bid to overcome what you perceive as a weakness, which is actually just something that's there to help you uh, be healthy. Okay. Um, None of us are super human. Uh, We all have limits. So the next thing that I want to talk about in self-care is giving yourself a buffer in time. What I mean by this is what we tend to do is we schedule ourselves um, with a ton of activities. We don't allow for time between activities. Um, We might roll out of bed and right onto the bar and there's no buffer between the time you get up and the time you you drive to work and you just go right into opening the store. I find that having a buffer of at least 30 minutes where you can sort of focus on getting acclimated to the morning, to expectations and goals for the day, taking time for yourself to, you know, do some stretching, drink some water, do some stuff that will help you. Maybe the physical things that I talked about before, um, those are things you can do in the early morning. That's a classic um, buffer time. But even throughout the day, taking time um, to create pockets of little 10-minute windows where you can recalibrate allows you to gain a greater perspective over your situation. A lot of bad decisions in coffee are made because we lack perspective, because we don't give ourselves any margin or buffer to actually think through our next actions or our next decisions and our words to other people. And we don't really give ourselves any time to explore um, ourselves and, you know, how we're doing. So give yourself time. Look at the day and think, how can I take little pockets throughout the day to recalibrate, settle down, maybe get a greater perspective, um, hear my own thoughts again, and re-enter the atmosphere of work or family or whatever it is you're doing and That time is so precious. You can actually carve that time out for yourself. Um, Giving yourself time around your activities to recalibrate is huge. Another aspect of self-care, the next thing, is to expose yourself to positivity on a regular basis. This means friends and family that build you up and don't tear you down. This means even people that might have different perspectives from you, but are there to build you up and help you along in your journey. It doesn't have to be only people who agree with you and you don't have to collect for yourself a bunch of uh, sycophants and yes people that uh, just always tell you that you're right and, and wonderful. Um, you know, their positivity comes in the form of people who are for you. Let's use the Danny Meyer um, term for hospitality is something that is done for you and not to you. 
um, people in my life who have been really positive influences have also been people who have uh, helped shape me as an individual through challenging me. And that's helpful. So there's like a, a mix of people who will affirm you and you know, encourage you and think similar and, and it really gives momentum to you. And then there are people who recalibrate you and help you because they are for your success and finding those people and those influences is something that, uh, we are in charge of. We can actually choose who we hang out with. We can actually choose who influences our lives and who we let in and not let in. If you take more agency in that quest, um, then you find those positive influences who are for you, then uh, that's going to help in this self-care. It's a huge step to make because you're uh, basically taking charge of your circle of friends and influences, and that's a form of self-care because you're limiting and cutting off from you those who are negative influences, those who are Um, influences that tear down is a better definition than negative. Because like I said, uh, people have told me things that I didn't want to hear, but they were right and they loved me and they wanted the best for me and I know it. And I could have said, oh, that's negative. But actually, it wasn't that negative. (laughs) It was just that I had a negative attitude toward it. Um, Truly negative people, the toxic people, you know, the people who de-energize you, the people who tear you down, that's what you want to be, get rid of in your life uh, as much as you can. Now, the next self-care item is to develop interests and hobbies and passions outside of your full-time work and, that you can engage in to disengage with that work. So if you work full-time in coffee, you can take up something outside of coffee like music or art or whatever it happens to be for you, um, something that is uh, going to remind you that you are not just a coffee professional. You are a human being. You are not just a barista. You are not just a, a worker. It doesn't have to consume your life. You can be passionate about it, but it's not you in total. And to be reminded that you are far, far more than what you are at work. Uh, it looks like basically engaging in other activities that aren't related to work. So build for yourself these places where you can go where work is not, and that could be in the company of friends or just by yourself, but hobbies and things that will not be directly related to coffee, (laughs) those really help uh, engage different parts of your brain. They remind you of you being human and, and not just some coffee machine it's really helpful. And, um, this is one of the basics of self care that, um, sometimes younger baristas, I feel like struggle with this because they want to show themselves to be so passionate for coffee that they basically sacrifice, um, all of the margin of their lives. And they sacrifice, you know, they say, I'm consumed by coffee and that's all I do. I don't know that that's the healthiest thing. I don't want to say that it's absolutely wrong. Maybe, that's right for you. But I, I tend to think that creating um, uh, other interests outside of coffee for yourself and really diving into those can help create a healthier existence within coffee, ultimately uh, helping you be a healthier human being. So the last thing I want to say about self-care is you need to communicate your needs and limitations to management and to leadership because they hold um, the key to being able to, you know, give you time off to do these things or schedule you for um, shifts that, you know, according to whatever else you have going on in the day can allow you to engage in these things more often. It's in your best interest not to wait around for them to engage you because we all know sometimes that just never happens. You know, sometimes you need to be the one to bring it up because the, the perspective uh, is one of, well, you know, if no, if there's no complaints, then everything is fine. And you know that's not true. You just would rather not be the squeaky wheel. So self-care basically is permission to squeak, <laughs> if you will, as a, as a wheel. Make sure that you're communicating. Hey, um, I'm feeling burned out. I'm feeling 
like I need some time, I need to readjust my schedule, I want to do the best I can, and here are some things that I think will really help me do that, and make it a conversation. Uh, insert yourself into the process and uh, communicate those things. Now, I want to say this. We've gone through a bunch of different things that will help you with your self-care journey. I would encourage you to do all of these things on a regular basis. If you have a schedule for when you show up for work, you should have a schedule for when you show up for yourself. When you have a schedule for how you show up for yourself, you will make it a priority. When do you breathe deeply? When do you drink water? When do you, when do you practice um, the guitar? What, uh, you know, when do you give yourself time? How are these things literally scheduled into your week? And then do it on a regular basis. St- you can start small, but make a schedule for yourself and show up for yourself on a regular basis. And and don't make these just things that you remember when you feel like you're about to lose it. This is preventative maintenance, mostly, for you, for people. And there are many more things, I think, that we could list off here that would help you, and you have obviously a better idea of what works for you and what doesn't. But doing these things on a regular basis is key. I want now to talk finally to managers and owners. Part of the reason why people that work for you don't engage in self-care is because they are taught that self-care is a form of weakness, is a uh, thing that doesn't have room in the coffee bar. We don't want to make a scene. We're taught that we are to serve and to react and to um, just give, give, give. And we feel funny about asking for something related to caring for ourselves, somewhat because we feel like management should be looking out for that and they aren't. And so we're bringing it up. And it's true. I think it's true that the manager should be looking out for the best interest of their employees and making sure that they're aware of the tendency for service staff to, uh, again, fall on the sword and or just give too much of themselves that's maybe unhealthy, knowing that that is a propensity is going to help you facilitate self-care for your staff. One of the ways that you can do this is by having an actual relationship with each of the staff members in the cafe. You know, this happens through one-on-ones and conversations that don't just center around, you know, checklists and procedures and policies. It has to do with them as a person. And when you know their limitations, as you engage in a real relationship with them, you know, you will be more sensitive to scheduling them and you might not schedule them for a clopin. And you might not um, make them work extra late for a deep cleaning task because you know that they're in, you know, whatever place they're in or they have these priorities, but you know they'll say yes. You know that this person wants to work well for the company. You can exploit that for sure. Many managers do. Or you can work hard to create um, a win-win for everybody on your staff. That's not possible all the time, I know. But even if you have to schedule somebody for something that's not ideal, that may not in your mind fit in with self-care and providing the most healthy of environments, you can do it in a way that communicates that your ultimate priority is to their health. And over time, what people will become uh, aware of is how you approach scheduling habitually how you do things on a normal basis. When the exceptions happen, it's not going to be just a case against you. It's, it, it'll be an anomaly. Managers and owners and leaders and cafes have the ability to make self-care a real conversation and to facilitate it, help facilitate it in the cafe uh, through scheduling, through conversation, etc. So um, 
if you have a staff full of people who feel burned out and aren't communicating, it's time to take a look in the mirror. It's time to, you know, think how have I made, um, how have I stopped up the works of communication in the shop and how can we make self-care a real conversation? So again, we need to look out for the physical part of um, what we do, the sleep, water, breathing, sunlight, uh, exercise, and nutrition. We've got to know our limitations and and not despise them. We need to respect our limitations. Uh, We need to give ourselves time during the day to recalibrate, gain perspective, give yourself buffer. Um, You need to also... You need to also surround yourself with positivity in the form of people who are for you, who will not only affirm you, but will also positively and lovingly challenge you and be in control of that circle of of influences in your life and start taking charge over that part. Um, We also need to make sure that we're communicating to our managers and those who um, kind of hold our fates in the palm of their hands with the schedule and um, you know expectations at work that we're being vulnerable with them and taking initiative to make it a conversation. If you're a manager, again, make this a priority of caring for your staff to make sure that they know that they have permission to engage in self-care and that you're not expecting them to just be some kind of uh, a, a robot impervious to energy depletion and, um, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I know that this applies to management too. There's so much work that goes behind the, on behind the scenes. Communicate to the owner. Owners, uh, if you're in this position where you are going to get burned out, you need to be able to delegate to others uh, tasks that will allow you to be able to take care of yourself you know, you need to make a schedule for yourself that will allow you to be the best you can be for the benefit of others, but also you're for yourself and uh, your, yourself as a person and, and not just this professional that is separated from the human experience. So self-care is one of those cornerstones of a healthy work environment. It is a group effort, absolutely. And it's an individual effort. So let's be in communication Let's give ourselves permission to be human, to need help, be vulnerable, talk about it. We've got to be grounded. We've got to gain perspective. And as we care for ourselves more uh, in the process of caring for others, we're going to be happier and we'll be better in the long run. So if you want the show notes for this episode, you can go to keystotheshop.com. On the website, there's a little uh, place on the sidebar where you can enter your email address. And uh, once you do that, you'll be signed up to receive the show notes and e-newsletter sent to your inbox on a regular basis. And um, yeah, the show notes are really helpful because they break down the um, the bullet points and main points made in each episode, along with links to resources mentioned in the podcast as well. Um, If you want to reach out to me, you can do so by emailing Chris at keys to the shop.com. Happy to hear from you and uh, chat coffee. So I'm really excited for next week's episode. We have James Harper coming on the show. He's the host and creator of the filter stories podcast. Um, it is a great podcast it is a radio drama style, um, telling the stories of, uh, people in coffee that are, don't often get told. And we'll be talking about the power of stories in coffee and what we can do to really, Um, use stories and and integrate storytelling in the way that we do business and how how should we think about stories and and this is a really fascinating conversation uh, with James so you won't want to miss that and uh, yeah so thank you so much for joining me today I appreciate your time go out there and start doing these things for yourself we need you to be healthy you need you to be healthy and um I think I'm going to go right from this uh, podcast right now and and take a big drink of water and a deep breath and uh, challenge myself to practice what I preach even more. So uh, thanks again. And as always, I hope that this episode has truly given you keys to the shop.